Today is going to start with a meditation session. Uh, so you'll want to get yourself as settled as you can, find some place quiet if you can, um, try to, to turn off any alarms or anything that might come up and disturb you during that. Um, and while we're getting settled in, I'll talk a little about the Nova Sutras movement, explain the cross quarters, um, talk a little bit about Agaya and the Ubuntu. Uh, then we'll, we'll open sacred space by calling the corners and then go into the meditation. Uh, the moment of the cross quarter is at 19 after the hour. So just a couple of minutes before that, um, I will uh, sort of transition into uh, focusing on, on a very specific location for that. Um, and we'll take that location as a center from which we can project a Gaia and Ubuntu out into the world. And then after the meditation, uh, we'll have some time to chat and talk a little bit about your experiences, talk about the Nova Sutras movement. Um, so keeping the microphones muted until then, um, and we'll get started. So I'm going to show you a few slides here. So the Nova Sutras movement is an attempt to bring science and spirituality together and a way to co-create practices that will really sort of celebrate the wedding of the rational and the intuitive or emotional aspects of our being and really provide a space for the full recognition of the beauty and power of nature. We celebrate solstices, equinoxes, and cross quarters, um, and the midpoints between the solstices and equinoxes, because these are amazing phenomena about our planet and the way that it orbits the sun. This is founded in science, and yet it's inspired religions all over the world. We notice the position of the sun in the sky and on the horizon at these different times of the year. Um, this is sometimes called the grand octal, or the eight seasonal cusps of the year. So we're at the cross quarter which is the midpoint between the June solstice and the equinox in September. Today at 19 minutes after the hour, we will arrive at that specific midpoint uh, along the Earth's orbit. And from an earthly perspective at that moment, the sun's gonna be directly overhead off the southwest coast of Mexico. In the Northern Hemisphere, this is essentially the heart of summer. The reason we experience it this way is because of the way the Earth is tilted in its orbit uh, with the Northern Hemisphere in the warm months leaning toward the sun a little bit more and getting more direct sunlight and longer days. In Nova Sutras, we choose the, the grand octal, these eight points of the year, uh, to meditate together on two fundamental concepts, Agaya and Ubuntu. We're using these terms as a brief way to express some very complex ideas. Agaya is a new term, and it's essentially an expression of our joy at recognizing the deep sacred beauty of the universe. 
it's just an attempt to articulate um, what that inspires in us. Ubuntu is a term that's borrowed from South African languages. It's about community, mutual aid, interdependence. Um, they've summarized it as, you know, people are only people through other people. In Nova Sutras, we expand that to recognize that people can only exist in the presence of healthy, intact, thriving nature. So to open this as sacred space, we'll call the corners, which is an invitation to send wishes for Agaya and Ubuntu for thriving within Agaya and Ubuntu uh, to all beings by going around the directions, up, down, and then from inward out. So you can do this uh, just sitting and thinking through it. If you're in a space where you're comfortable standing and gesturing to the different directions, that can be really inspiring. I'm gonna start with where the sun is now for me. Uh, it's midday here, so that's the south. May all beings to the south abide in Agaya and Ubuntu. May all beings to the west abide in Agaya and Ubuntu. May all beings to the north abide in Agaya and Ubuntu. May all beings to the east abide in Agaya and Ubuntu. May all beings above abide in Agaya and Ubuntu. May all beings below abide in Agaya and Ubuntu. May all the great tree beings that so beautifully connect above and below abide in Agaya and Ubuntu. And like the trees, may I abide in Agaya and Ubuntu. May all beings near me abide in Agaya and Ubuntu. May all beings in this watershed abide in Agaya and Ubuntu. May all beings in the nearby habitats within this bioregion abide in Agaya and Ubuntu. May all beings on this continent abide in Agaya and Ubuntu. May all beings of Earth's beautiful and bountiful biosphere abide in Agaya and Ubuntu. Now I invite you to settle in for the meditation. Let your body get still but feel the lift in your spine as you breathe in and take a nice deep inhale. And then let it go. Inhale and feel that connection of Ubuntu with the plants that produced the oxygen that your body is taking in. Exhale and feel that joy of Agaya that plants can capture the carbon dioxide that you exhale and turn it into their own bodies, turn it into the fruits that feed us, turn it into the flowers that brighten our day. Feel your feet connected to the ground beneath you. Feel the top of your head 
reaching toward the sky above you. Allow yourself to continue to breathe deeply and slowly as we start to center in Again, feeling a Gaia and Ubuntu within ourselves. How does it feel to be on this beautiful little planet in a spiral dance around our sun? as our sun travels around the heart of the galaxy. How does it feel to know that all of the green plants, all of the animals, all of the fungi, all of the micro microscopic organisms everything alive in this world is in Ubuntu with us, can be our ally. So we're now approaching that point in our orbit that we call the cross quarter. From an earthly perspective, the sun is directly overhead where it's solar noon, which right now is over the Pacific Ocean off the southern coast of Mexico. Try to envision how that looks and feels right now. This brilliant midday sun directly overhead. Imagine that you're on a raft out in the Pacific Ocean. As you stand there, you cast no shadow except directly under your feet. Imagine taking in the brilliant warmth and radiance of the sun, pulling that into yourself and transforming it into a Gaia and Ubuntu. Imagine that, that loving kindness, that joy, that wonder, radiating from the center of your being, shining forth through you, from your heart, and out into the world at this moment of the cross quarter. As you inhale the sense of a Gaia and exhale the feeling of Ubuntu, understand that you are in a community that we are all sharing in this. That everyone meditating now is there with you. All of us radiating Ubuntu and a Gaia from our very center. Together, we shine the light of Ubuntu and Agaya across the deep and sparkling immensity of the oceans. Together, 
we shine Ubuntu and Agaya to every place on earth, now touched by the light of this cross-quarter sun. Together, we shine Agaya and Ubuntu out to touch all of those in the dark of night right now, all around the world. Together, we shine Ubuntu and Agaya across the universe from our beautiful little home world. Together, we inhale the joy and wonder that is a Gaia. Together, we exhale the loving kindness and interconnection that is Ubuntu. Inhale, Agaya. Exhale, Ubuntu. Inhale, Agaya. Exhale, Ubuntu. Continue to breathe at your own pace. And just let Ubuntu and Agaya fill your being. Now, extend these experiences of Agaya and Ubuntu and offer them as a gift to the whole world. Feel yourself as a connector between the heavens above and the earth below your feet. Recognize that our allies, the trees, make this connection between the worlds of air and soil even more strongly. And thank the trees for showing us how to link heaven and earth together. Really open yourself to a Gaia, to the joy and wonder of this amazing planet we live on. And let that fill you with gratitude for being alive at this incredible time in this amazing place, in this beautiful and beloved community.
when you're ready. Very gently and slowly open your eyes and allow yourself to return to where you are. You should come into a state of calm attention, energized and soothed by your contemplation of Ubuntu and Agaya through the moment of the cross quarter. Take this time to thank yourself for sharing in this worldwide meditation. Thank all the other meditators who participated. We in the Nova Sutras community thank you for taking this step toward global wellness and awareness and toward a vision of a world abiding in a Gaia and Ubuntu for the future. Thank you all for being here. I'm going to uh, unmute everyone. And now, Lionel, I'm going to transfer um, transfer the hosting over to you. Okay. And um, I don't know if you noticed a few people, at least one other person. <laughs> I'm going to mute. I'm going to mute those two. Okay, I think that was, uh, I, yeah, I'm not sure whose one it was. But. Um, yeah, it looked like someone came in in the middle of the meditation there for a little while. Might have been more was, than one. Yeah, uh, the, uh, I think the one person that did come in was actually my dear friend, Kaya. Ah, uh, okay. Um, So the intention now was to open this up for a little bit of discussion. Um, this is a really important aspect of Nova Sutras as a community is to have this ritual of celebration of meditation at these eight points of the year. Um, and then to extend that as an opportunity to be in conversation and really find ways to, um, to express Agaya and Ubuntu through our actions and in our lives. So maybe a place to start um, would be just to think about some of the things that you experienced during the meditation and what that brought up for you. Okay, I'm gonna try unmuting okay. Omar and Lisa. Hello. Hi there. I actually gotta get back to work, so I'm gonna bail out. Thanks guys. Okay. Yeah, right. it was nice to meet you Lionel. Same. Thanks, Thanks Omar. Out, Omar. All right. Okay, bye. Love you, bye. Bye. Okay, cool. All right, I, I, Lisa, I've got, I've yeah. definitely got some things to share, but would you like to start? Um, it was a beautiful meditation. I decided I was just going to go with the floating aspect. I was lying down in my bed and 
really felt warmth from the sun and shared the energy. I started uh, my second level Reiki class yesterday and the finishing is next week. So this is right in the middle of my um, learning the second level for Reiki. So I kind of naturally brought that in and shared that as well. And it was just allowed me to breathe deeper in um, Agaya and Ubuntu. Mm. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Perfect time. I, yeah, right? Yes. I really, I really connected with that, with that meditation deeply. And um, I think for me, con doing meditation that really places earth and living systems at the center of what is being concentrated on is, um, it, it, it works really well for me. And it, I've, I actually like, as we were going through, as we were actually discussed, like, as you were facilitating the meditation, Michelle, at the, like, the moment of the cross quarter and right afterward, I felt, I felt incredibly joyful. And I had tears welling up in the sides of my eyes. And I think, and, and it, I really enjoyed considering the concepts of Agaya and Ubuntu um, as part of the breathing exercise, like you would in yoga. Oftentimes in yoga classes, they'll say, you know, like breathe in one thing and breathe out another thing. Oh. And um, right now I still feel like I'm gaining, I'm still working on gaining uh, like an internalized understanding of Agaya, the word Agaya and the word Ubuntu. But the but I, I started using the words in my mind like breathing in a connection with the earth and breathing out cooperation with all people mm. and I felt like those were like kind of good baby steps towards understanding a guy in Ubuntu and it felt really replenishing and refreshing and connecting actually to to do that practice so I, I I really, really enjoyed that on a deep level. Thank you. So, um, I guess kind of building from that, there, the originating intention of Nova Sutras is to bring more sense of Agaya and Ubuntu into the world. Um, would, would it be helpful if we talk a little bit more about what those terms are and then talk about other, other things that we can do, other ways that we might approach this? Yeah, I mean, I'd love that. I, I, I'm like, I am interested in discussing the definition of those terms because I'm still, I really am still working on internalizing them. Um, and then I'm, I'm interested in a conversation about how we bring, kind of how we actually like realize those things as qualities that are shared between people and between humanity and the earth itself. Yeah. Any thoughts, Lisa? I'm glad you shared um, that um, you're, you're working on internalizing them because I also am also working on that. And I liked um, the images that you used for um, the meditation. I thought it was great. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I second that the images were really uh, easy to connect with. Mm hmm easier because we um yeah because they are new concepts yeah 
and just like love or, and appreciation um, when you first hear the words, it takes a while to to learn the feelings. Yeah, totally. Definitely. Um, I'd had yeah a lot of a lot of additional stuff that I sort of scripted and was hoping to get to, and then I'm like, no, there isn't time. <laughs> let's. <laughs> let's go. Um, <laughs> So, uh, so if you want, I'll, I'll share a little bit of that with you now uh, as a way to start, start building that understanding. And that's, maybe mm -hmm. that's the, the first step. Maybe that's part of the answer is to help uh, build that in understanding in us um, and find good examples, good ways to help share that understanding with other people. Mm -hmm. So, the one thing I wrote, I said, um, Agaya is an attempt to articulate the awe that we experience when we recognize the wondrousness of nature. And that's whether you're talking about, you know, something minuscule, the color of a tiny little flower going, growing out of a crack in the pavement. Um, the feeling of the warmth of the sun on your face or, you know, huge, vast forces, the bone shaking power of a thunderstorm, the sweep of the stars in the sky. Will you say the definition of it again that you started with there? So it's an expression of that, that joy and awe that we experience when we recognize the wondrousness of nature. Mm -hmm. you know, so, okay. Again, that, so. that connection to that deep, sacred beauty of the living world and just the immensity of the universe. Yeah, that's really cool to have a word for that. It's, I really like that a lot. <laughs> that's, that's super awesome. Wow. I agree. It totally is. Do you guys have some other um, <clears throat> things that come up for you when you, when you try yeah. to try to get there or, or other questions that might help you get right. there? Right, yeah, examples. Um, my friend was recently visiting his brother in Pennsylvania and showed me a picture from his brother's uh, property of a caterpillar with <laughs> larva hanging off of it. It was wasp larva that were attached to a big fat like many wasp larva yeah attached to a big <laughs> fat green caterpillar and it was simultaneously like beautiful gorgeous and kind of like terrible and terrifying <laughs> all at the same time That's but it <laughs> totally inspired a sense of awe in me. Yeah. I think that's a piece of a piece of it that we you know, other other religions sort of recognize um all over the world that there is this this really interesting balance that we're in of as beautiful and amazing as everything is, it's not like it's all safe and pretty. There's a ferociousness to the beauty of the living world that, that has to be respected. You know, it, that's part of where the reverence comes from is to just understand that, um, yeah, that there's this, this wild fierceness out there that is intrinsic to how everything works. Um, 
and to still be able to put yourself in a place of, and that's really beautiful. You know, a hurricane yeah. is really beautiful. <laughs> Probably you don't get that when you're in one. But when you think about what they look like from above, it's really beautiful. <laughs> yeah. And remarkable set of like forces of nature at play all at once in a hurricane. Yeah. The one thing I miss about living in Phoenix, Arizona are the lightning storms that would walk through. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. And that's why I don't live in the snow, because that's just a little too intense for her. <laughs> <laughs> I've got that thing cover covered for you. Uh, oh, good. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're um, California girls. We can't handle that. <laughs> I don't think anybody would say I'm anything other than a California boy, but <laughs> I live I live on the East Coast just fine with the snow, actually. No bother. All right. But Good one for of the you. Things, one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in nature was driving, when I was driving through the panhandle of Texas, and witnessed a, a lightning storm. And I think it's like probably the kind of lightning storm you're talking about, Lisa. And I had never seen anything like that in my life before. And it was totally mind blowing and so cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I used yeah. to I used to visit my grandparents in the high desert and it's that same, the the desert lightning storms where, you know, the air is so crisp and everything just totally smells like ozone and electricity while it's happening. Mm -hmm. And suddenly it's all around you. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, you're just like, okay, I remember that <laughs> I am a really tiny, fragile thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. You know, yeah. This is this is kind of results out of that, but I'm just thinking like, I mean, depending on what happens with climate change, all of humanity might be super forced into a recognition of that truth. Yeah. Yeah, it's um uh, there are there are signs and portents that um, that things are about to get really intense. Um, yeah, you know whether whether that's in two years or twenty years is hard to say, but that's the time frame we're looking at. Yeah, um, and yeah, we're we're going to start to feel those kinds of things a little bit more. Um, and in part, I think if we internalize that ability to, to understand that, that the fear and the joy are part of the same thing, I think that that gives us a little bit more resilience to deal with those challenges. And then of course, as we get into Ubuntu, understanding our our utter interdependence that that deep connection that we have with other people with all the other beings that um make life possible that 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 then represents a another maybe even more important wellspring of resilience you know to really understand that we're in a a community of, of allies that mutual aid is part of how the whole world works, um, that that's normal and that, um, you know, that, that is how humans are kind of wired for that deep level of community and interdependence and it takes a lot to beat it out of us.
Um, I, I think that that's another place where um, if we're really going to thrive and honestly, sometimes if we're just going to make it through what's coming in, in the next few decades, we've got to, we've got to reconnect with that and, and build it in ourselves uh, and learn to recognize it and find it in one another a lot more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. <sighs> Michelle, mm-hmm. um, was it you that I was talking to about the Japanese that they do um, tree uh, forced bathing? Were we talking about that or yeah. was it just okay? Yeah, yeah, it's... yeah I've been writing about that and and actually um lisa were you going to make it down for the event on the 18th yes it's on the calendar wonderful um so so one of the things that we're going to do as kind of an optional uh end piece for people who can who can stick around through the afternoon the park where we're doing it um has this little forest trail that that goes up into a redwood grove so we'll like do a um, forest bathing is is a practice that you can do by yourself you know just sort of the way that you are when you go into the woods but what can be really powerful is to set some agreements and intentions with other people before you do it and then come back afterward and and reflect on your own experiences with other people. Um, again, that's that recognition of, of Ubuntu, of the fact that we're so, our, our existence and our self-definition is deeply dependent on other people. So even sharing something as personal as what I experience when I really take the time to sit and look at a tree or watch a dragonfly for 10 minutes, that's, that's worth sharing because it helps build, it helps build community, which in turn helps build our own internal ability to thrive. beautiful yeah. yeah truly that's great honestly my mind just turned to like oh man where can i go to do that too <laughs> I want to do that. who do i do that with yeah where's my group yeah. <laughs> and, I'm, and i'm and i'm a little envious that you guys are starting a santa cruz chapter of new sutras because i wish i had my people here in new york that i could do this with yeah yeah well we'll you know we'll start we gotta figure out how to start finding you more people to uh to talk into this and and uh support (laughs) you in in finding the right spot and making that happen so maybe we maybe we need maybe we need the the new york city chapter i think so i think sounds great i know right (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to come out and visit at some point. Just yeah, truly. Wow. Wow. Awesome! I like road trips. Wow. I love road trips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, this is sounding yeah. more and more like a plan, Lisa. I think we leave the boys at home and and just. <laughs> <laughs> well, Omar was on. So Omar would go with us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Oh my. Cool. Um, right. when's the next when's the next event? When's the next oh, meditation? It's the next event. Actually, let me I had that written here somewhere. Ah, here I will I will even screen share it with you if I It's September 23rd, and the challenge is, oh. <laughs> it's at, um, yeah, after midnight, 
uh, mm. local time. And I think September 23rd, I think that puts it as a Sunday night, if I'm remembering right. Uh, Monday. Mm. So Monday morning. Monday, Monday, right. Sunday, Sunday night, Monday night, morning. Yeah. yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. Well, um, Omar and I had talked about going up to Washington, so if we schedule it then, he may not have work on Monday. Oh, good. Okay. So, uh, so it's, it's a minor possibility now. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, you know, um, the other thing that's interesting about that timing, actually, is that that's in the middle of the global climate strikes. Right. So I'm going to be striking from the 20th to the 27th Great. and wow. for the global climate strikes. And it's pretty, I, I like find it sort of meaningful and interesting actually that this is in the middle of it. Mm, yeah. I don't know what to make of that. I'm not sure well, where to they chose it specifically to be on the equinox or Right. I'm also just thinking that there are going to be a lot of people all around the world looking for ways to participate in the global yeah. climate strikes. And yeah. I would love to find ways to get out the word about this. Yeah. Because a lot of, because all the people who are the most tuned in to the global movement to deal with climate change are going to be hyper aware that like action needs to be taken that particular week. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of discussion amongst the various um, climate engaged groups here. And um, I think globally, the intention is to try and let this be youth led as much as possible. Um, and to have <clears throat> have all of the other groups kind of be in solidarity with that. And obviously, mm -hmm. um, Nova Sutras is really set up more as a, as a solidarity and support, not, not mm -hmm. an action kind of, um, kind of group. So mm -hmm. to, to offer that, and I'm trying to be, again, because of the timing and, you know, I'm not sure that Eric will be able to take, that Monday off, so he probably won't appreciate me trying to host something live in the middle of the night. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, but I can, you know, I can do a, a pre-record and then I can at least listen in on headphones. <laughs> um, yeah. um, uh -huh. But uh, right. but maybe what what I do in addition is plan for like at noon on Monday, so twelve hours later. Um, inviting people to to replay the meditation if they want to do that, but then to go into um, into a discussion of of Nova Sutras and how it can support um, support activists because that's a really big piece of of why I tried to build it. Mm -hmm. Totally, yeah, yeah. Good thinking. Yeah, totally. Those are some cool considerations. Um, yeah, yeah, cool. I was just thinking the it's midnight your time, but it'd actually be in the morning in Europe. Right. <laughs> so like, it'd be cool to get, uh, you know, a thousand Europeans on the call. Oh yeah. <laughs> that wouldn't, that sounds okay, right? Yeah. 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 Okay, much to consider. Yeah, um, that'd be pretty good. I, I'd find a way to make Eric put up with it if I was a, uh, if we, if maybe we, he we're gonna have a good turnout. Yeah. Maybe he should plan on taking Monday off now. Yeah, that's <laughs> a good point. I should talk to him about it. <laughs> yeah, oh man. Okay, very good. Um, well, I feel like I feel like we're there. Are yeah. we there? I think we're there. Did you guys have any other questions or closing thoughts? I'm good. All right. Do we want to close with just like another sort of minute to to center before we leave? Sure. I'm good with that. 
All right. Okay. So we'll just do this in silence. Here, I'll, I'll give us a little bell to start and a bell to end. Awesome. Thank you. Really feeling the love. Thank you both so much for being on. Yeah, truly. Thank you so much for hosting and for doing this all together, you guys. It was great. All right. Awesome. Love you guys. Bye. Have a beautiful day filled with Ubuntu and Agaya. <laughs> Thanks. Same. See ya. All right. Bye.